Warhammer 40,000 is full to the brim with characters that audiences love and adore. For what they do, for how they're written, even just for the situations they find themselves in over and over again. It's chocked full of amazing characters that people can really latch onto. These are not them. I hate you, Patrick. I hate you more. I hate you no matter what. Yeah, well I'd hate you even if I didn't hate you. <laughs> I'd hate you even if that made sense. I'd hate you even if you were me. That's how much I hate you. Now, when getting into hated characters, there's mostly going to be those who are hated by the community, but some who are generally speaking hated in canon. Like an example of that is Horace Lupercal. A lot of people like him as an antagonist and as a driving force in the Horus heresy, but I can't discount him because even 10,000 years later, people hate and despise Horus, despite not knowing who he is, his true nature, or why he did what he did. In fact, he's basically morphed into being a Satan-like character, seen by followers of the Imperial Cult as effectively like a force of evil in the universe that needed to be banished. And before we get in, let me just first ask you to subscribe if you have not already done so. It really does mean a lot to me, and we are nearing the one-year anniversary of this channel. Let's see how far we can get before November 24th, because that is the big date. And if you have already subscribed, thank you so much, it really means a lot to me. Now, I know I just said we're gonna say that before we get into it, but again, let's say this before we get into it. Let's really analyze what makes people hate a character. And in my mind, it can be distilled into three distinct things, of course with a few exceptions. What truly makes people despise a character on a deep level is incompetence and poor power scaling. Because when a character is incompetent, and generally tends to blunder things around them, either by ignorance or by incapability, people will grow frustrated with them very quickly. And I don't necessarily mean in a physical sense, because in Warhammer everyone is very physically adept and terrifyingly strong. What I mean is when you screw up through lack of judgment. You know, characters who make a wrong call because their ideals were too clouded, or they were stuck in a rigid belief system that they wouldn't compromise, and it ended up costing people dearly. People find that frustrating, and it just makes them despise the character. Audiences can recognize an honest-to-god attempt, but seeing someone who could do something, but screw up just because of their own pig-headishness, is really grating and just leaves an awful taste in people's mouths. Now, the next one is poor power scaling. That being when people see a character pull off a win that's so miraculous and so insane that they need to suspend their disbelief and say, now wait a minute, that seems like way too much. In fact, anything that will really cause the audience to come out of the immersion and question what they're reading, destroy the suspension of disbelief, is gonna incite a lot of ire. Because it's just narrative breaking and oftentimes they need to sort of work around this character to explain why they don't just win the entire setting themselves. Again, it's something audiences hate, but that's enough for now. We really ought to get into it. I'm sorry for the delay. So starting this list, I'm gonna kick it off with a strong one. Number 10 is Leandros. Yeah, you know Leandros, that really bitchy ultramarine from the game Space Marine, who ratted out his commander, Captain Titus, for being quote-unquote possibly tainted. Now, there are so many memes about this guy, and I've even seen people make fucking soyjacks of this character, so that's kind of a death knell for any fictional character, honestly. But the hate comes from the fact that he's basically just a thumper of the Codex Astartes, and everything wrong with the Ultramarines in terms of the fandom, so people just really fucking despise this guy. And speaking of shitty Space Marines, number 9 is Artemis, the Death Watch Space Marine, who is responsible for effectively maybe dooming the galaxy a little bit. Now, not everybody knows about this character, but everyone who knows him really fucking hates him, because when Eldrad Ulthran and some of his thralls were conducting a ritual to summon Yenid, the Eldari god of death who was supposedly going to defeat Slanesh, he interrupted the ritual. And Eldrad Ulthran surprisingly pleaded with him, stating, Hey, just let us complete this ritual and then you can kill every single one of us. We will sit here and let you do it if you just let us complete the ritual. And he said, no, screw you. Basically stating that he would rather have the galaxy fall under the sway of Chaos than under the sway of Xenos. Now, that sounds a little bit questionable to say from an Inquisition standpoint, especially considering the Inquisition tolerates Xenos to a degree, but Chaos not at all. And 
it should be noted that it's stated in the lore that, oh, this ritual would have caused the Astronomicon to flicker, and would have resulted in the deaths of millions or even billions of humans as they all would have been lost to the warp. He couldn't have known that, though, so you can't really give him that to his credit. And that's why people hate this character. Especially anyone who's an Eldar fan fucking hates this character. But you know what? I honestly find that pretty hilarious. The fact that this guy was so racist, he just said, fuck it, I'm taking the whole galaxy with me, and decided to basically doom all of sentient life just through sheer force of racism. <laughs> Next up on the list is Erda, the quote-unquote mother of the Primarchs. Now let's knock this out of the way, we all know the real mother of the Primarchs is Malkador the Sigilite. Honestly, someone needs to draw Malkador wearing a shirt that says like, I'm not the stepmom, I'm the mom that stepped up, or one of those. <laughs> now, the reason people hate Erda is for a few reasons. One, she was the genetic template that the Emperor helped use in order to create the Primarchs. He needed another Perpetual specifically one who trusted him. However, when she realized what he had planned for them, she's the one who jettisoned them all into space. Now, despite her questionable reasoning for doing so, this does technically mean that everything that happened in the setting was her fault. You can see what I mean in my video talking about the Primarch homeworlds, and I'm sorry I forgot about the mind parasites with Prospero, sorry, I got a lot of shit for that, but you can see how the planets the traitors landed on affected everything, especially with regard to Horus, Mortarion, Angron, and Lorgar, because none of them would have turned out the way they did were it not for the planets they landed on. So yeah, technically the Horus heresy is her fault. And furthermore, such an important character is basically just dumped on us all at once in one fucking book, Saturnine. Basically, John Grammaticus meets her and says, oh yeah, you're Erda, right? And she reveals to him, yeah, I'm the mother of the Primarch, surprise. And we get sold this thing about how John Grammaticus and Olanius Pearson supposedly know her and think she's so cool and all that, but we've never met her and they've never mentioned her. And yet, she's just dropped on us here and now, and then it's dropped on us that she's the mother of the fucking Primarchs? It's just such a weird storytelling thing. This is the reason people hate the book Saturnine so much, despite it being amazingly written. Like, this book is damn near perfect, except for fucking Erda. And honestly, in my opinion, she could actually be replaced by a character who already existed. Amr Astarte, the chief geneticist behind the Astartes project, and from whom space marines get their name. Basically, what you would have to do is make her somehow perpetual that she didn't know about, but the Emperor did know about, and have her basically hide in exile because she can't challenge the Emperor. It's not that hard, and we had met her prior in Valdor Birth of the Imperium, another really, really good book. It would take an already interesting character and make her far more complex, and open up a lot more character discussion in regard to her development. But Erda is literally dropped on us nowhere like a bomb. And then, after everyone hated this character that was stuffed down our throats, we all kind of hated her. However, two books later, she's only in two books, Saturnine, not in the next one Mortis, and then in Warhawk, she's killed off. Erebus just shows up, she reveals these super cool badass powers that she has that we didn't know about or didn't know was possible, like she splits into three different beings, takes on four greater demons of chaos, but is then just killed by Erebus because she's now exhausted from the fight. It's the weirdest thing, and it all just comes out of fucking nowhere. It seems like having her be killed by one of the most hated characters, and I'll get to Erebus in the video, in this way seems almost like an attempt to save face for the character, to get us to like her or sympathize with her somehow, but funnily enough, it had the opposite effect, wherein people count this as Erebus's W moment, and whenever people talk about how much they hate him, there'll always be someone who says, well, he did kill Erda, so we gotta give him that, and you know what? There's just something beautiful about that in my mind. And since I just mentioned him, number seven is Erebus himself. You know, the so-called Hand of Destiny. Now, I'm putting this one on here against my better judgment, if I'm being honest, because I made a whole video back in the day on why Erebus is actually one of the most beloved characters in all of Warhammer. The reason being, he falls into that category of characters you love to hate, because when one of the biggest memes in the fandom is fuck Erebus, and his whole reason to exist is to be hated, then yeah, he's kind of done his job perfectly, and hating him is honestly a form of loving him. Nobody complains that Erebus is poorly written, or that they wish he was never in the setting. People hate him because he's just so great at what he does. But 
Someone who has an entire meme based around hating them simply can't be excluded from a list like this. And I knew I would get Hell in a Handbasket if I excluded him. So let's move on here. Number six is Abaddon the Despoiler. And again, this is one I actually don't really feel is all that fair, but it is different from the Erebus one because people hate Erebus for being so successful and so good at what he does, but when it comes to Abaddon, people hate him because of his lack of success. 13 Black Crusades to get this far, people feel is way too much, and they believe he should have been ousted a long time ago. He actually has the nickname of Baelbadon, and when I released my most recent video, painting his moment below the Saturnine Gate as the saddest in Warhammer, a lot of people pointed to me and said, hey, thank you so much for sympathizing with him and really looking into the character instead of falling back on lol failbadon failbadon failbadon. But that really can't be denied why people hate him. However, in my mind, it's not entirely justified. He's honestly the only character who could do what he does, and I don't think any other character could replace him in his position of War Master. But yeah, 13 Black Crusades is a lot, and he has met with a limited number of successes. However, I think he's a very interesting character when you look at him in books not just in the Heresy, but also post-Heresy, such as Aaron Dembski bowdens Black Legion series, where he really shows himself to be an adept commander, and you can understand why people follow him the way they do. Also, it's a common claim that Abaddon has quote-unquote plot armor because of how long he's been leading the Black Legion, and because of his win over Sigismund. I don't really think that's true, because he is a savvy leader in a lot of ways, so he could reasonably stay in power, and he hadn't aged in a thousand years while Sigismund was like a thousand two hundred years old at this time, and definitely slowing down, because Space Marines do start to slow down past a certain point. And it should be noted, Abaddon barely made it out of that fight with his life. But one thing that does feel like bullshit to me is his fight with Jubal Khan in The Solar War, the first book in the Siege of Terra series. That feels like bullshit to me. I honestly could keep going about Abaddon, but we're gonna put a pin in that for now and move on. Two, Lucius the Eternal. And oh boy, I can already hear the venom bubbling behind the screen now. Y'all hate this guy. <laughs> now, I was talking earlier about incompetence and power scaling as the reason why people will hate a character. Here, we're sort of moving away from the incompetent characters to the power scale ones, because Lucius is very, very good at everything he does. Honestly, a little too good. Yes, he did betray Saul Tarvitz, you know, a character everybody adored and held near and dear to their hearts in the early Horus Heresy, in a way that was so scummy and left an awful taste in everyone's mouth. But as previously discussed with a character like Erebus, that isn't a death sentence. In fact, it can sometimes play to a character's benefit if done right to set them up as a really awful antagonist. However, what people despise about Lucius is his bullshit ability to come back from the dead. He's supposedly this unbeatable swordsman, yet we see him lose now and again. However, if you beat him and take even the tiniest modicum of pride in it, oh, surprise, you become the new Lucius and there's nothing you can do about it. That's just so eye-rollingly irritating, and nobody likes that ability. I'll be the first to say it, the Emperor's children deserve more interesting named characters, but please not him. And he also just has so little depth outside of, oh, I'm the greatest, and I'm so sadistic, and ooh, my super cool, always never die ability. Like, there's very little to him, honestly. Especially when you compare him to characters like Fabius Bile. Being hateable is fine. Being irritating is unacceptable. And, going on with this thread of logic, another example of characters that make people just groan in anguish is Kaldor Drago former Grand Master of the Grey Knights Legion. And boy howdy, this one is notorious. The dude basically travels through the warp on his own, kicking the shit out of demons, and even beat the demon Primarch Mortarion in one-on-one -on -one combat, and carved the name of his predecessor on his heart, thereby permanently humiliating him, because he's just so unstoppable. People view him as everything wrong with the Grey Knights faction in general, that he's just so OP and so amazing and no one can ever beat him. I, I, I'm kind of losing words to describe this sort of character type, so I'll just shave it down and say you guys know what I mean. An unbeatable character like this who gets into impossible situations and just cannot be stopped is something nobody likes. He feels like a really crummy OC, if I'm being honest. And again, since I just mentioned him, the next on the list is Mortarion, Primarch of the Death Guard. 
Now, I knew I had to put at least one Primarch on the list, and the reason I zeroed in on Mortarion, the second option was actually Lehman Rust because of the whole Burning of Prospero thing, but it was because he comes across as a hypocrite, which again leans into incompetence. His hatred for psychers, yet he still falls back on it, and his desire to rule, like he believes he should have a small empire despite having opposed tyrants and opposing the emperor for being a tyrant. He states this in the Scars book. And there's also the fact that he has his own plans against Horus even during the Siege of Terra itself, like he plans to swoop in and take the throne. And that's not to mention the fact that he was the leading voice against Psykers at the Council of Nikea which effectively screwed over the Imperium and is regarded even by Space Marines during the Heresy as a complete blunder of Imperial policy. That was his fault. And the language he uses at the meeting is so condescending towards Magnus. He says, oh, I'm not doing this because I hate Magnus, I'm doing this because I love him as my brother. I'm just looking out for the safety of his soul. But when the decision is about to be reached, he's standing there with this smug, self-assured look on his face, making it clear it's absolutely personal. He just comes across as a dishonest hypocrite, and he doesn't really do much cool stuff. Like, for all his faults, Lehman Russ has his defenders, and some other Primarchs just kind of go unnoticed, but I've yet to meet anyone who actually likes Mortarion, or for any good reason. And this whole thing of being unreliable and treacherous just rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And I don't mean treacherous in that cool, I outsmarted you kind of way like Erebus, in that kind of, I'm just an unreliable asshole kind of way. And speaking of unreliable assholes, another character everyone hates, and also speaking of the Space Wolves, is Othir Weirdmake, Rune Priest of the Space Wolves Legion. Now, if you don't know this character, I wouldn't blame you, because he only appears in one book in the Horus Heresy that being A Thousand Sons. But it's a really good book, so I would totally recommend picking it up if you already haven't, as well as having a smaller role in the book Prospero Burns. But still, it's mostly just one book. But realistically, that's all it takes to make everyone and their mother hate your guts. Because what this guy did was go out of his way to befriend Azek Aramin, the very likable chief librarian of the Thousand Sons Legion, and exchange information with him. Their relationship was really nice, because it seemed like two very different legions reaching across the aisle through a small shred of commonality. However, when the Council of Nikea rolled around, the council by which the Space Marine legions were to decide the fate of Psykers within the legions, he spoke up against Araman and the Thousand Sons, revealing then that their friendship and bonds of brotherhood had been a ruse all along in order to get Araman to divulge his secrets. He used these secrets to then decry the entire Legion as warlocks, all while denying up and down that he is in no way a sorcerer like the Thousand Sons despite being a quote-unquote rune priest because his power comes from the World Forge of Fenris and the Heart of the Planet, or whatever the fuck that means, even though it's very clear that he is a warlock as well except he has even less training and less control, thereby making him probably more dangerous, honestly. Like, we have characters who use other characters, like the whole Alpha Legion, for instance, but they don't pretend to be someone's personal friend. And I think a lot of people can actually relate to having someone they viewed as a personal friend turn on them and screw them over or shit-talk them behind their back. And it really hurts. Also, there's again the hypocrisy, you know, that sort of incompetence we see also in characters like Mortarion, because he himself is a barely trained psyker and a librarian, but he just swears that he's not because he just isn't. And another reason people hate him is because of the consequences of his actions. It's very similar again to why people hate Mortarion for the Council of Nikea, because it saw the Thousand Sons, a very likable legion, screwed over. And people know that the Council of Nikea was actually one of the Imperium's biggest blunders, because it left them with their pants down when the Horus Heresy rolled around and demons began playing on the field. And I'm going out of my way to say this now because I actually missed it back during the Mortarian part of the video. Now, I also feel like I want to put an honorable mention in this, and that would have to be, surprisingly, the Emperor. Because even though a lot of people love the Emperor, we all know you gotta praise the Emperor, guys, come on, it's, it's pretty obvious at this point, but... There's a lot of people who do hate him and cite him as everything wrong with the Imperium. People who decry his every action, from the Great Crusade to the Council of Nikea to the Burning of Monarchia 
and many more, along with the insane amount of xenophobia. So, while he's also one of the most beloved characters in the fandom, he is also one of the most hated because basically everyone has some kind of opinion on him. Very few people are just neutral. Most people have thoughts one way or the other. And for a character to be this polarizing, especially a character who is effectively the protagonist of the setting, really does say a lot. And now on to number one, and it is John Grammaticus. Oh Lord. Now, if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you might know that I am not fond of this character. In fact, you might say I hate him. You might even say I despise him. You could even say that I am rooting not just on his death, but on his narrative downfall. You might even say I want this character humiliated and retconned into the fucking black hole at the center of the galaxy. Now you might be thinking, hang on Chrono, this sounds like a personal bias. And you should also note that it's also my video. <laughs> But, for real, I do have reasons for why he's number one. And it's not just because people hate the character. People hate him included in Warhammer. Nobody who dislikes Mortarion says it would be better off if he wasn't there. People who hate Erebus actually want him there whether they want to admit that or not. And Othir Weirdmake does serve as a good villain, and his death was really satisfying. But John Grammaticus? actively ruins the story by his mere presence. The only other example of this I can come up with is Kaldor Drago, and John Grammaticus is a significantly more consequential than Kaldor fucking Drago. He has shown up in several novels now, and every time my eyes just roll so far back in my head, I can start counting the brain cells that are dying when he opens his mouth. It's because his dialogue is so... It's just so inappropriate for what you would expect in a 40k book. And we keep getting told he's this badass. We keep getting told he's awesome. But it's just barely ever shown. He just is more than anything a damsel in distress. But we are just continually sold this narrative that he's somehow cool. And the galaxy hangs in the balance on what he does. And oh, he's got this big part to play. He's just there with his thumb up his ass in the shadow of better characters. Just fucking up the lore, honestly. Now... One of the most requested videos in the history of this channel is a full rant on John Grammaticus. And to that end, I actually listened to three separate audiobooks. That being Vulcan Lives, Unremembered Empire, and Old Earth. I probably never would have read Vulcan Lives or Old Earth were it not for this. Because I was putting myself through the research before I make a John Grammaticus rant video. And I'm still holding off on that even now, because the End in the Death Volume 2 is about to come out, and he's gonna play an important role in that. God willing, it will be the last one. Don't carry him over to Part 3, Dan Abnett. And I want to wait for that and listen to that first, just so I can have a little more of my bases covered, and be ready for, I guess, the last part of the book to cap his story off. Which it probably will, let's be honest. Now, one thing about him is I have seen people try and defend this character and say, hey, I find his commentary kind of cool, or hey, you know, he brings a sort of human element, and those people have been dogpiled. I have seen people viciously mocked for liking this character or defending this character. And don't do that, that's really mean, and people who like him are entitled to like him, but th that's fucking hilarious. Defending this character will have people turn on you. That is how hated this character is. The reason everyone flew to my channel like mods to a lighthouse is because I openly expressed hatred for this character. That gained me like a bit of a reputation in the fandom, honestly. People like make John Grammaticus jokes at me because they know how much I hate this character and how much so many other people also hate this character. And in reality, a lot of hatred for these characters are common memes in the fandoms that bring people together. So, I guess the real worst character in Warhammer was the friends we made along the way. But what do you guys think? Do you guys believe that I'm right about these characters and that they genuinely are hated? Do you guys think someone else should have been on the list? Was there any one character I didn't go hard on enough or should have been harder on? I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below, and please consider subscribing. But until then, I will see you in the next video.